Hi, I'm Cliff Sadoff, Extension Specialist at Purdue University. In this video, we are going to talk about galls and how to manage them. First off, what is a gall? A gall is a tumor-like growth that a plant produces around an invading organism to contain it and the damage that it can do to the plant. In other words, in the war between insects and plants, galls represent a truce. Here, you can see a mossy rose gall produced by a rose to contain the larva of a stingless wasp that laid eggs in the leaf buds during the spring. Most species of gall makers, especially those that live on leaves, do not threaten plant health. In contrast, gall makers that produce galls on roots, like this woolly apple aphid, or shoot tips, like the coolie spruce gall adelgid, and stems, like the horned oak gall wasp, can alter or slow plant growth. Galls can also be home to insects that move in after the gall makers have left. The predators and parasites of galls are not so polite. They actively hunt for galls so they can eat the gall maker and live in their house. Many organisms can induce plants to produce galls, such as wasps, mites, flies, aphids, and even pathogenic bacteria and rusts. So how can you tell if a bump is actually a gall? This oak stem has bumps made from a scale insect, a leaf bud, and a gall maker. These swellings, called oak bullet galls, are not normal. When I remove this bullet oak gall, the tissue will rip. In contrast, this scale insect can be easily separated from the plant tissue leaving behind a white, waxy shadow. The hackberry nipple gall is caused by a sucking insect called a psyllid. Adults lay eggs in leaves in the spring that hatch into nymphs, which become encased in the gall. This insect continues to feed with its sucking mouthparts all summer until it becomes an adult in autumn that exits the gall to overwinter in the bark cracks and crevices. Other gall makers can attack flowers. This green gall, called the ash flower gall, is made by a cigar-shaped mite called a rust mite found in the galled flower tissue. Mites then leave the galls to winter in the cracks and crevices of the tree trunk. Many gall makers, like the wasp that produces the horned oak gall, have long, complicated life cycles. Adult wasps emerge from horned oak galls in the spring to make galls along the leaf midrib. Then, in late summer, the wasps emerge to lay eggs in twigs that live in the galls for two years. Adults leave the stem galls to make fresh galls on new leaves in the spring. You can use the Purdue Plant Doctor webpage available at purdueplantdoctor.com to find out more information about many different kinds of galls. Simply type the word gall, G-A-L-L, -L, and select from a drop-down menu. So if you're interested in finding out information about the Cooley spruce gall or Delgid, you would select it from the drop-down menu. And you would see photos of the Cooley spruce gall in various different stages. So here you see the late-stage spruce gall on a spruce tree with a larger, well-developed purple gall. And on here, you'll see its life stage on a Douglas fir where they actually will twist the needles. It's interesting to note that there are two hosts of this particular gall maker and they need to be in close proximity in order to cause a problem on either the Douglas fir or a spruce tree. You can then look down of, to get more information about biology and find information about management recommendations that gives you details about when to apply insecticides on spruce to prevent gall formation as well as when to apply insecticides on Douglas fir to prevent the twisting of the needles. And then you could ha get a list of effective pesticides that you can take with you to the store. In contrast, if you had a gall on a rose and you wanted to find out what kind of gall you actually have, you would type the word rose and click on rose and select branches and look for uh, galls that might be on, on a branch. And here we see something here where it looks like there's some 
balls on this uh, twig over here, get a high resolution photo. And this is an example of something which we call crown gall, which is quite common on roses. You would then uh, click on the crown gall to get more information about the biology, uh, where it occurs, as well as the fact that we really have no effective pesticides against this particular problem. So please be sure to visit our Plant Doctor webpage and don't let your plant problems get you down.